Hi everyone and welcome to week 14, reporting and dashboards. So what are database reports? A database report is a way to see important information from the database. They can be done by hand or by or automatically. The software that is holding the database, a lot of them will have built-in reporting tools and you can just say, you know, please run this, please run a report. A lot of them will also allow you to customize it so you can have reports for different scenarios and showing particular pieces of information. Reports can be done at assigned times by a predetermined condition run by the software or you can actually go in and do it by hand. So you can go in and run the commands that you would need to do to be able to generate a report. Um, basically, all database software does have this. So even if you wanted to try it on like, you know, LibreOffice or something, they will also be able to run reports. Reports can be used for basically everything, anything from sales data, details about users. You can actually customize it and really drill down into the data. Uh, all of the different options most companies will run reports on their databases, whether it's on the data or on the performance of the database, relatively frequently. And it will get used in presentations to like C-suite execs. Um, it'll get used in quarterlies, uh, all kinds of things. Dashboards is a way to show information visually. Dashboards are made up of widgets. Widgets are ways to show small pieces of data that are important. This can be important performance, import, important metrics, or just important data from the database. You can actually have multiple dashboards. So one of the things that's really common is that you would have a dashboard for system metrics. How's the RAM on the database? How's the hard drive on the database? So like, what is the percentage on the hard drive in terms of what's taken up by database versus what's free? One of the things that we'll do a lot of times is we'll look at the RAM and the hard drive to see if we need to do more provisioning. Maybe it's a virtual machine that needs more provisioning. Maybe it's the server starting to get out. Maybe we can use it as an alert because we're actually buying virtual machines from a cloud service and we know that that's going to pop us into the next price tier. And so we want to think about, do we want to hit that tier? Is this because sales are up or is it because we messed something up? Um, you can think about things like what would a database administrator care about? But you could also have a dashboard for users. So, um, you know, for the library example, it's not just how's the health of the database, but how many books are checked out? How are our inventory levels? Um, you know, how many users are actually coming in? Are we having, you know, sort of a surprising uptick? These are all different things that we could actually keep on a dashboard and we could show all of these small pieces of information so that we could keep track of how our database is doing. We can use reports for, you know, presentation um, or compliance is actually another really common thing. Um, a lot of industries will have different compliance requirements, whether that's because of the industry, the competitors or uh, federal. Sometimes governments will actually have particular compliance requirements. And one piece of those compliance requirements is really commonly reports. Um, those reports are generally static information. So we're just looking at what was true at the point in time that we ran this report. So, you know, how many users did we have? Uh, were we able to keep the user information sort of separated. How are these two databases doing? Um, you know, how many requests have we gotten in? Stuff like that. Dashboards, which are made up of widgets, are usually updated on reliable and um, consistent time frames. So dashboards will sometimes be like hourly, daily, weekly. Sometimes it's way more common and it's, you know, dashboards um, and the widgets are updated every minute, 10 minutes, depending on the situation, you know, um, if you're, let's say, a programmer and you're running some variety of uh, deployment or a release, then you need to keep track of a whole bunch of different metrics to make sure that uh, you didn't just fork the entire system. Because um, most programmers actually get really nervous during releases because when they're doing updates, they need to know that things are going wrong before the customers know. Um, 
you know, like if you run Windows, you know that Windows tends to updates on Tuesdays and you know that Windows updates are kind of infamous for having issues. Um, that's generally not something that companies want. And Windows can kind of get away with it because of their market share. And by get away with it, I mean made fun of consistently. But a lot of other places, if they had that kind of problem, people would leave. Um, they would go find their competitors. They It would not be okay. Uh, so the company wants to be able to keep track of things during releases and they will use widgets and dashboards to be able to do it. Um, you know, hey, did we have a spike in traffic? Hey, did we have a spike in, you know, rejections? Hey, did we have, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, so dashboards are a good way to keep track of things, to see problems immediately. Reports are good at seeing what happened or seeing where the system was at a specific point in time. Both will take the metrics and performance, but they will show them in different ways. And they will both be structured in coherent ways so that you can make decisions, but they're just um, paying attention to different things and used for different things. You know, you wouldn't turn in a dashboard for a compliance requirement and you wouldn't, you know, sort of stare at a static PDF while you're trying to do a code release. Um, another common thing that you'll see with dashboards and reports is something called the North Star metric. The idea behind the North Star metric is that you are focused on important information. You're not cluttering your visualization. One of the things that's difficult is you want to be able to find ways to get rid of things on your dashboard. It is really common for dashboards to sort of be cluttered, be really full, and that's not necessarily a good thing. If you have too many things on your dashboard, you are no longer focused on the important pieces. You know, if you have 25 widgets that you're looking at, is there a way to pare it down? So maybe you only have 15, maybe you only have 20, um, because you don't necessarily want to have that clutter. Uh, that can distract you from the big problems. North Star metrics are a way to focus on the most important value without getting led astray. North Star is usually the key metric for success. A lot of product-led companies will use it. Picking a North Star should be aligned with customer values and your product. Unfortunately, this can sometimes be, you know, oh, what's your North Star? It's making money. But um, it's supposed to be that you have something that you're focused on and you are using your performance, your dashboards, your reports, and sort of all using that to focus on this one thing so that you're not getting distracted from all of the extraneous information. Okay, example, good reports and dashboards. Um, I'm not showing what a good report looks like because reports are generally long documents. The screenshots do not help in any way. You know, a screenshot of a 12 page PDF is not useful. So um, good report should have a clear purpose. It should be focused on key metrics. It should use some data visualizations to communicate important takeaways. The data should be up to date, clean, does not contain extraneous information, and it should include an action item. A good report can be a variety of lengths. Um, one of the things that you'll sometimes see is if you're presenting to, say, C-suite execs, you'll generally have much shorter reports. Maybe it's a half a page, maybe it's a page, maybe it's five pages, but you generally keep that a lot shorter and more focused. Whereas if you're doing, uh, say, a compliance report, it's not uncommon to have compliance reports be sort of monstrosities of like 40, 50 page documents because of the amount of detail and requirements that you have to put into it. You can have good reports of different lengths, but being able to have these sort of clear pieces of the report is how you can tell it's a good one. You know, the purpose of my report is fulfilling the compliance requirements, which are listed here. The purpose of my report is to update the um, CTO on how the database is doing and the performance. The purpose of this report is to show the director of sales, the customer numbers, like very clear. Um, and making sure that the key metrics are shown is like, well, 
if I'm showing the director of sales the customer numbers, they probably don't care about, say, how much money I'm outputting in IT costs. That's not really relevant to them. So we want to stick to those important relevant things. And the same with the visualizations. We only want enough in there to illustrate our point. We don't want to take up too many. An example of a good dashboard, um, something that is clear, um, something that has enough widgets to show the information that is important without too many. You know, one of the things that you can see on this dashboard is that it is not cluttered. It is not too full. Um, the text is relatively easy to see even from kind of far away. You can choose to show or not show some of the other information and it's focused more on the key information for this particular scenario. It doesn't necessarily matter what the scenario is. It's just um, this is showing some sort of key information for that scenario. So that's an example of a good dashboard. Okay. Bad reports. Bad reports will have too much clutter. Um, it can be sort of tempting for some people to want to add in more than they need to have for the report and kind of, you know, TMI it. Uh, bad reports will also be too long. You know, think about your audience. If you hand a CTO a 40-page report, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell you right now they're not reading it. They're just not. They have so many other things that they're doing. It might seem really important to you, but they're just not going to read it. They're going to skim it at best. Um, a lot of cases, the sort of C-suite execs will get reports that are somewhere around one or two pages, and then they will ask for more information if they want it. They don't usually want it, but they will ask for it if they want it. Um, but if you hand them a 40-page report that has every single detail of every single thing, they're going to tune you out because they have 40 other things on their mind. Um, Bad reports will show raw data with no context, you know, um, just like lists of numbers. Bad reports will also have inconsistent or old data or, or just straight up bad data, you know, data that didn't need to be collected, um, data that hasn't been cleaned, data that is, you know, super out of date. So like customer sales, but it's actually last year's customer sales. And well, whoopsies, we missed half of the customers and we didn't bother to collect for the first three weeks of December. But hey, don't worry about it. I handed you this report anyway. Like, that's not really useful. Um, this is an example of a bad dashboard. Now, I will say this is a, a joke dashboard. Uh, most places that have really crummy dashboards are not going to be sort of willing to share. Hey, look at my crummy dashboard. Um, but let me assure you that when you get to industry, uh, you will see some crummy dashboards. And this is not as much of a joke as I would like to think it is. Um, so you can see some examples here. Um, the... There, there are only a few widgets, but like you can't really read things. There's too much going on. The colors clash. There isn't enough contrast. You know, it's actually really hard to read the text. The graphs um, and charts that are being used don't really make any sense. You know, like the revenue goal and the margin goal. Like, what does that actually mean? How is that helpful? Like, you know, these are not widgets that are sort of useful in any way. So um, you can actually see sort of how they got to the point of delivering this worst dashboard they could imagine. Um, and I would, I would love to tell you that it's completely a joke, but it's not. Um, and people will use real life. Oh, I saw this in my company. It was awful. And then they'll add it in. And that's how they got to this worst dashboard. Okay. Um, some different ways to have bad dashboards. <laughs> System metrics that are easy to make into a widget, but aren't relevant, is a really common way to have a bad dashboard. So let's say, for example, you have a database that does not have input output. It's just, it's, it's a static database and the database does not get changed. Having a widget that's paying attention to the IO on a system that doesn't have IO, um, that's a good way to have bad bad widget. Um, multiple representations of the same concept. So while it might be easy, let's go back to our library example, it might be easy to have a widget for books checked out and authors checked out. Look how pretty that is. But, but do we care? 
is this helpful? Does it make a difference to have books checked out and authors checked out? Is that adding value to our dashboard? Or do we just care about books checked out? Do we just care about percentage of the inventory that's checked out? Like, what do we actually care about? Um, another example, proxy information. So um, let's say proxy information instead of actual information. So the memory for the book checks out. Yes, it goes up with more memory, with more people checking out books, but why not just look at book checkout numbers? Like, just look at book checkout numbers. Um, you could also, sometimes you'll see a simulated dashboard where somebody will frequently run reports and then call it live information. That's, that's not live information. That's frequently run reports. They aren't the same. Okay, some example reporting tools. Um, BERT is actually an example of a popular reporting tool. It's an open source one. Um, and there's ones built into LibreOffice that are also open source. There's also a bunch that you can pay for. They will come in and um, be part of the database. So you can see um, some that are sold are things like Splunk, Tableau, Power BI, Oracle. Um, a lot of the places that offer database services will also have reporting and dashboard services. Um, being able to create and maintain a dashboard, create and maintain widgets is actually something that is built in either at cost or at, you know, um, at, at additional cost for a lot of the tools that are out there. They've started really bundling them in together. Some example dashboards. Um, so these are two examples of paid for dashboards. So these are not free dashboards. You, you give them the pretty money. Um, but I picked these two because they're really popular. So uh, Microsoft has Power BI and Tableau is another third party company that you can pay money to. Um, and then they will walk you through creating dashboards. If you follow these links, there's actually a whole bunch of sample dashboards. So you can get some idea of what people would consider a sort of good example of a dashboard. Um, you'll also see that dashboards and reports are something that is really popular to be shown on job descriptions. So if you are looking for a job and you see anything about, you know, skills wanted and you see uh, Splunk, Tableau, Power BI, Zoho Analytics, Oracle, um, AWS QuickSight, Domo, things like that. Those are all going to be reporting and dashboard tools because that's an incredibly common thing for basically everybody in industry to be able to run. It's not just data people that run them now. Data people might set up the dashboard um, for others or they might, you know, like you might have a DBA that will set up some of the reports, but it might be the, you know, sales QA or dev that's actually running the reports that the DBAs have set up. Um, so those are some example dashboards and what those will look like. And you can follow those links for some more examples. How to pick which one you need. Um, I will say in most cases, you probably frankly need both. But um, dashboards, you need updating information. You need to watch for things over time. You need to see problems before they happen and you need alerts. So let's say um, we have a database and we're using a dashboard to pay attention to the health of the database. We need to see that the database, um, you know, the RAM, the hard drive, and the query speed is staying relatively consistent over time. We need to be able to have alerts if they're starting to go too high. In a lot of cases, the third party that you pay for the database services, even if you're doing not like full database as a service, we're just doing like partway, you know, VMs and stuff. Um, they have price tiers. And one of the things that will happen is the price tiers will go up at a surprising rate. And if you're, you know, using something like say Elasticsearch, um, you will start getting hit with some real nasty bills. And I'm not calling out Elasticsearch, they all do this. Um, to be clear, like Elasticsearch, Cassandra, whatever, they all do this, but um, they have price tiers. And so you need to know before you hit the next price tier so that you don't get a surprise bill so your company doesn't get a surprise bill. You need to see these problems before they happen. So you need alerts to make sure that it's actually going on. A report 
will give you something different. You need to turn in information from a snapshot in time. Hey, here's our quarterly sales. Hey, here's our quarterly database performance. Hey, um, right before you know taxes went in, this is how our database and queries were doing. Um, we'll also see you need to turn in a summary for a meeting or a compliance requirement. So a report is something that will be handed out at uh, sometimes leadership meetings, at quarterly meetings, at year-end meetings. Sometimes it'll also be used for postmortems. So um, a postmortem in industry is where you basically say, hey, there was a problem. Let's run through the problem in excruciating detail. Do not place blame and see what we can do to fix it next time. And so having a report of the database, if it was a database problem, is important for the postmortem because then we can say like, okay, well, where did the problem start? At what point in time did this start becoming an issue? A dashboard wouldn't necessarily be able to show you that the way that a report would. The reports are good for static information and data. So like what happened over the past month with our dashboard that turned this into a problem? Why did we get this surprise bill in the mail? What was going on with our query performance? Why did we accidentally write so much data to our database that we had an accidental bill in the mail that was three times what it usually was? Let's go over and see what happened. That's what I'm saying. Okay, some example use cases. Uh, a report would be used for giving a presentation or an executive summary. Executive summaries are usually a page or less. A dashboard would be used to keep track of a virtual machine running the database to make sure that there are no provisioning issues. A report would be used to analyze specific issues going on, such as healthcare appointments being scheduled too frequently. A dashboard would be used to monitor the health of a code release. This is actually this is one of my common examples um, where if a code release is happening, say, overnight, I know that it's very common for uh, quite a few people to sort of be on call during the releases to make sure that everything is working right. And one of the things that they do as part of being on call is watching a dashboard on generally several big screens. Uh, a report would be used for compliance. Most places have some variety of compliance, even if it isn't federal. Um, they have some variety of compliance and they are encouraged to turn in reports frequently. Uh, this can also happen if there's any accreditations. Um, so like, you know, if you're ISO certified or, you know, in education, we have, you know, accredited schools, things like that. Dashboards are used to predict issues before they happen, such as trying to head off support tickets because companies do not like it when customers complain. They will try to do all that they can to make sure that they are heading off problems before the customers complain. So those are some example use cases of dashboards and reports. So hopefully you can see why you are most likely to be using both in different contexts and how they are both useful for kind of different things. So that's the end of week 14. I hope you are all having a lovely day and that you learned something new today.